Hi all, my name is Yves Zimmermann. In this talk, I'm going to give you a brief insight into our latest publication on the topic towards dynamic transparency, robust interaction force tracking using multi-sensory control on an arm exoskeleton. In our previous work, we introduced a novel exoskeleton design. As I demonstrate here, the kinematic design allows us to perform almost all movements that are required in activities of daily living. Indeed, without the robot attached to me, I could do the same, probably even better. So why do we actually need the robot? The purpose of the exoskeleton is to render interaction forces to the user, while they are elsewise free to move their arm. The research question for this work is how to robustly track interaction forces with the robot while the user performs highly dynamic movements. You might be wondering what socio-economical motivation stands behind this research. Our main application case for this robot is robot-assisted neurotherapy. In a conventional neurotherapy scenario, the therapist grasps the arm of the patient at multiple locations. This allows them to affect the patient's movement by interaction branches. At the same time, the therapist can gather valuable information about the patient's reaction to these interaction branches. The therapist uses this ability to assist, correct, resist, and assess the movements of the patient. Robots can be used to take over the haptic interaction with the patient. While the robot takes care of the physical labor and the simple cognitive tasks, the therapists gain more capacity for the cognitively complex tasks. Therapists are very good in applying precise forces on the patient's arm to correct or assist movements that are governed by the patient. Except for the desired interaction forces, they behave haptically transparent. With rehabilitation robots, we want to achieve a similar or even better performance. Let us have a look at what was achieved so far. To demonstrate the performance of the hardware, we were using a simple feed-forward controller to compensate the robot's gravity, Coriolis, and centrifugal terms. As you can see, the exoskeleton is controlled such that I am able to move quite freely. We could demonstrate that the gravity load of the robot can be compensated accurately. However, the mass was still perceivable as inertia. This did not satisfy us, as we strive for dynamic movements without disturbing the user. The controller which was used in the previous video compensates the gravity, Coriolis, and centrifugal forces. The desired interaction range is just controlled over a feed-forward term. To compensate for the inertial terms and the friction, we need to incorporate interaction force measurements. Previous research by Eust et al. has shown that a good performance can be achieved by observing the joint torque error and compensating for it. However, this controller does not include any knowledge about the dynamic model of the robot leaving the disturbance observer to compensate for everything, which leads to a limitation of the torque tracking bandwidth. In the publication to the top controller, we could demonstrate that our feedback-based controller achieves on par performance compared to the disturbance observer approach of used et al. However, due to the series elastic actuation, we achieve a comparable transparency up to much higher frequencies. In this presentation, we will introduce a controller that incorporates model knowledge as well as feedback action to further improve the performance. First, we will have a look into the choice of the feedback linearization. Let's have a look at a video of the resulting controller. As you can see, there are large acceleration present in the excited movement, while barely any force is needed by the human to drive the robot. To make this possible, the environment that the robot interacts with so here the human, has to be analyzed carefully. The exoskeleton that we used for the experiments has two contact points with the human, one at the upper arm and one at the forearm. At each contact point, the interaction forces can be modeled as a function of the robot state and the human state. As the human state is not measured, we model it as disturbance. FC can be an arbitrary complex model of the interaction force dynamics. A common approach is to model it as a spring damper system. In the following, we will denote FC and the human state as the environment. To derive a good control policy, we have to know the characteristics of the environment we are dealing with. For many applications in robotics, we assume to interact with an environment of known admittance. For example, for light robots, often a hard floor is assumed. This allows to project the equations of motion to the support consistent null space by applying a following constraint on Q double dot. In this case, a feed-forward controller with feedback linearization of the device's dynamics 
works well and is the standard choice in many state-of-the-art robotic systems. However, in the case of exoskeletons, we are dealing with an environment of unknown admittance. In this case, we can do two types of assumptions. We can assume the environment to be fairly rigid, which allows us to use the same formulas as for the known admittance. However, in the case of the human interacting with the robot, we have to assume a soft environment. Soft means that we do not expect the interaction range to change much when we move the robot's interaction point. This allows the assumption that the interaction range will stay similar to the measured one during the next control cycle. Hence, instead of using the expected acceleration for the feedback linearization, we are using the estimated interaction range. The interaction range is then regulated by accelerating the interaction point of the robot according to the arbitrary control policy. In case of our robot, we have some constraints regarding the control policy. With both interaction points, the robot has 12 degrees of freedom in interaction space. With the six available actuators, the interaction range is not fully controllable. In addition, other constraints, such as joint space limitations, restrict the controllable space even more. For example, in our experiments, the first two joints will be fixed. This overconstraintness does not allow to use integral action controllers without properly handling the windup. In this work, we choose to use a controller that neither uses integrative action nor a model of the environment. This makes the controller incredibly easy to use and robust against changes in the environment. In previous work, we have shown that Coriolis, centrifugal and gravitational terms can be well compensated by the feedback linearization. With this control approach, we want to reduce the robot's inertia that is felt by the user. It is known that it is not possible to compensate the inertia fully. Hence, we want the system to render a pure virtual mass to interaction range errors. The real refracted inertia uh, changes significantly depending on the configuration of the robot. Hence, tuning one st uh, static virtual mass for all configurations would not lead to a good performance. Hence, we decide to use the downscaled real mass matrix as virtual mass matrix. This results in the following control policy. And accordingly, the joint torques are computed as follows. With perfect model knowledge, this controller will track the interaction branches while the interaction branch error diminishes with the dynamics of the virtual mass. In the real world, there are model errors which would disturb the tracking of the desired accelerations. To further improve the controller performance, we want to apply closed loop control for the accelerations too. As a feedback signal for the acceleration tracking, we are looking for generalized accelerations with low noise, low delay, and no bias. The options that we have uh, is the second derivative of the encoder measurements, which are afflicted by powerful noise, the filtered version of the same signals, which have dominant delay, or the estimate of the generalized accelerations based on the IMU measurements. Since the IMUs on the PCBs of the actuators and the load cells are fairly cheap and inaccurately mounted, there is a dominant bias which cannot be calibrated efficiently. As the filtered Encoder signal and the IMU-based estimation contain complementary information. A merge of these two could result in a signal that fulfills the requirements. Let's assume the blue line is the real system acceleration. Then the green line is the IMU-based estimate with a time-dependent offset. And the orange line is the encoder-based estimate, which is only delayed. This delay is known by the design of the filter and the derivative method. Using this delay, the bias of the IMU-based signal can be estimated at time t minus t delay. Using this estimated bias, the IMU-based estimates can be corrected and we achieve a bias-free, non-delayed signal. In this graphic, we can see the achieved performance of the acceleration estimation. The yellow, non-causally filtered, double derivative-based signal serves as a ground truth reference. We can see that the red signal follows the yellow one well during dynamic movements. In the static situation at the right-hand side, it converges properly to zero, while the IMU-based estimate has an offset, which would lead to controller wind-ups. Now, why are there so strong oscillations on the estimated signal? Remember that the IMUs are measuring the accelerations of the bodies and not the ones of the joints. As the real system has compliant bodies, we measure all the oscillations of the links too. 
In the transient behavior, we can observe that the oscillations diminish with time. This hints to the attenuated body oscillations much more than to measurement related noise. To track the desired acceleration, we use a disturbance observer. The synthesis of this controller can be found in the paper. Here we can see the acceleration tracking performance without using the feedback controller. The robot does not even move, as the stick friction is quite high compared to the inertia of the link. At the right hand side, we can see the performance of the active disturbance observer. The desired signal is well tracked. Further, we can see strong actions of the controller to compensate for the friction and other not modeled torques. To assess the performance in interaction force tracking, we chose to look at zero interaction force control only, as this is an often reported metric. To this end, we excited the robot in the demonstrated way. The trajectories were chosen such that the four distal joints are moving with comparable range of motion. As already mentioned, we could demonstrate that gravity, Coriolis, and centrifugal terms of the robot can be compensated well with a feed-forward term. The main expected advantage of the feedback controller is to reduce the undesired forces felt due to the inertia of the robot. Therefore, we choose the inertia ratio as a metric to evaluate the performance of our controller. The inertia ratio describes how large the virtual felt inertia is with respect to the physical reflected inertia of the robot. If the inertia ratio is smaller than one, the felt inertia is lower than the one of the robot. If the value is equal to one, we feel the effective inertia of the robot superposed to the desired interaction forces. First, we tested the feed-forward controller, which has shown to perform on par with the state of the art. We can see that the mean inertia ratio is larger than one, which lets us assume that there is non-negligible friction present in the system. Further, the joint-specific inertia ratio differs much from joint to joint, leading to an inconsistent feeling. When using the virtual mask controller, we achieve a reduction in the inertia ratio of a factor of three, Further, the difference in performance per joint is reduced. If we additionally apply the acceleration tracking controller, the variance is further lowered. However, the transparency is not much improved. To conclude, we introduce an interaction branch controller that uses a distinct feedback linearization to track the interaction branch under large disturbances by the user. We could demonstrate that this control approach is able to reduce the undesired reaction forces by a factor of three compared to the state of the art. Further, we introduced an acceleration tracking controller that uses IMU signals to improve the tracking performance. In further research, we strive to check the branch uh, tracking performance with dynamic references, to include knowledge about the environment in the model, to combine a transparency controller with a kinematically coupled shoulder girdle, and to demonstrate a transparency controller within complex hierarchical task sets. Thanks a lot for your attention.